Welcome back, everybody. It's your boy, your man, Murphy, Matt the Man here. Hope you're doing well. So it looks like Marvel Studios is finally saying, we need to give people something. On Wednesday, on Valentine's Day of all days. You know, I was thinking about why when they put out a, a, a giant casting announcement. We've been waiting almost four years for. Why would they do it on Valentine's Day out of all the days of the year to give us a cat? You know, why couldn't they do it on February 4th? You know? Four for Fantastic Four. No, no, maybe they just wanted to do it for February 14th. 14th. I, 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 that's the only thing I can assume. Um, because why would you put this out on Valentine's Day? Why not wait till the day after Valentine's Day? Or wait till March 4th? Or, I don't know. Something. Other than this. It don't matter if it's finally here. We finally got the cast. Official cast for Fantastic Four. After long, long overdue speculation and rumors and this person is being looked at now, this person is being looked at. No, that person was never being looked at. Oh, this person is being looked at. We can finally get our Fantastic Four. And we got Pedro Pascal, Joseph Quinn, Vanessa Kirby, Edmund Moss Backrack. I think that's how you say his last name. Now, how do I feel about this cast? And I'm going to go through them. We're going to go through. Stick around. The, the, main, the main leader, if you will, Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic, going to be played by Pedro Pascal. And this might not be a popular opinion. He, he's not working for me. For several reasons. Number one, I look at him and I just don't see Reed Richards. I just, I don't. It doesn't have to do with his hair, his, uh, his background. You know, he's Latino, Hispanic. It has nothing to do with it. I mean, if it was me, I mean, it's not about that. You know, for me, and they announced yesterday Sterling K. Brown, who was just in American Fiction, and is very well known for the for the show This Is Us, that was on, I think, NBC or ABC, or Fox, I don't remember. He, to me, looked more like someone who can play Reed Richards, and he's an African American, so I have no problem with that. But to me, Sterling K. Brown, and they and they announced him yesterday. I would say, yeah, I've watched This Is Us. There were some episodes where they jumped in the future, and he had the gray hair, sides, and I'm like, and he's a very nerdy character, brainy on This Is Us. Yeah, I mean, like, I a hundred percent see that. And they have said like Joseph Gordon Lovett. I could have seen him. Not to mention the thing with Pedro Pascal, the other thing, the number two thing, is he's everywhere now. Everywhere. He's on The Mandalorian. He's on The Last of Us. He's now going to be in Fantastic Four. He's going to be in Gladiator 2. <coughs> and who knows what else he's going to come up and I feel like when you get an actor that is in so many things at once, that's when you just, just, just see the actor, not the character. And I think when Pedro Pascal, like I've been for a long time with like Christoph Waltz, when actor in Glorious Masters, he was, they were casting him in every villain role that was out, from Green Hornet, to Spectre, to Ming Eyes, to, um, a few others. 
and it became um, Tarzan. And it became like, are there any other actors in Hollywood besides Christoph Waltz? I like him, but he plays a villain in every movie. And no offense, but when you play the when you play the same when you play it almost the same way every time, uh, why? The thing about Pedro Pascal is that he's, he's he's everywhere right now, and after a while, that can just be like I don't see the character. I see the actor. And for this being the first Fantastic Four movie under Marvel's MCU, Disney, and in the, the, the bad other interpretation of Fantastic Four, I you don't mind the first one in 2005 with Jessica Alba, Michael Chitlis, and Chris Evans. I mean, that's actually a lot of fun. Um, but it's still the second one, the the reboot with Miles Teller. You needed to get an actor that is really somebody that everyone would, would have been behind. Even before this official news came out, when they were saying Pedro Pascal, everyone was like, I don't see it. Even my sister's husband at one point over Thanksgiving, I brought it up, and he was like, "I don't, I don't know, I don't see it." Um, yeah, maybe he'll prove us wrong. You know, I say pretty much Marvel has not failed in the in the casting department yet. When you look at the MCU; they really haven't gone a bad route. <laughs> and that's the, other, that's the other thing about this. The third thing. You got such a well-known actor that has been that's in everything right now that it also makes you not connect with the character. You know why we like Tom Holland's Spider-Man? Because for the, for most people, that was the first time we've ever seen Tom Holland, the actor. So we connect with him. First time we ever saw Chris Hemsworth, other than the prologue of Star Trek 09. With a Thor, Tom Hiddleston, Loki, uh, even Chadwick Boseman, and a lot of people, other than for like Jackie Robinson and Jackie Brown, he was that was about it for him. Um, you, I think you can go on and on. Even Marie Larson was a pretty much a nobody. Yeah, he showed up in Twenty One Jump Street and here, a little here, a little there, but nothing major. You know, and that's that's the thing here. Um, you're getting an actor that is everywhere. I would have gone with more of an unknown, or at least someone who's done maybe one or two things, but minor, and then filled out the rest of the cast with maybe some more well-known actors. Get the Vanessa Kirby. I think Vanessa Kirby is a perfect choice. Um, I think she's blonde. She's, she's done the action in Mission Impossible and Hobbs and Shaw. Um, she's done, and it's great to see someone like this. Because t 10 years ago, a little over 10 years ago, she was in the movie About Time with Rachel McAdams, Domino Gleason, and the very young Margot Robbie making her acting debut. And it's crazy to think only 10 years ago you had a movie with Rachel McAdams, Margot Robbie, Vanessa Kirby, and now you look at, like, what like that, look how Margot Robbie just... Boom! And it's great to see someone like Vanessa Kirby who has slowly, slowly, slowly been, you know, taking on small supporting roles even in big franchise, franchises like Mission Impossible, like the Fast and Furious spinoff, Hobbs and Shaw. And now she's going to be one of the main leads in a huge franchise 
lot muscular, like Fantastic Four. So I think either she looks the part, she, she's a great actress. I think that was a perfect choice. Uh, Joseph Quinn, I thought this was also a great choice because he is so unknown to most people. Right now, other than appearing in Stranger Things Season 4, nobody has, he hasn't been in anything else. Um, now that's all going to change once Fantastic Four comes out. Because we get, we're going to see him in a quiet place day one. They just had that trailer out last week. So he's one of the stars of that. And he's going to be in Gladiator 2 with Pedro Pascal. Um, so we're going to see him in the next year and a half by the time Fantastic Four comes out in two major franchises, A Quiet Place and Gladiator. So, uh, I think after those two movies, everyone's going to know who Joseph Quinn is after. <laughs> but I think it was a great choice. I don't know this actor at all. I know he's on the show The Bear with Jeremy Allen White. Um, I mean, I don't know anything about him. So I can't really say here or there. For me, it works, and you know, I don't know him. So I'm, I'm glad to have one actor in here I don't know at all. So, and from Ben Grimm. But we already know Ben Grimm is going to be CGI, the thing. The thing is going to be CGI most of the time. Because they put out this promo image that lets you know a lot of things. Number one, it's going to play, take place in the early 60s. Uh, look at not only the, 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 uh, the set that they're on, the chairs, the couch, the, the stuff in the room, props and everything. You look at the costumes, they feel very 60s-like look to them. And the robot, um, reminded me, reminded me of, of the Jetsons, the animated TV show. Um... It was going to be in the 60s. I like that. I, I enjoy these guys. That's why I like the first Captain America. It was in the 40s. I like X-Men First Class. It was set in the 60s. Also. I don't know if there will be a little bit of a crossover. Maybe. Um, and like even the first Captain Marvel movie. Taking place in the 90s. That was fun. I grew up in the 90s. So... Seeing a lot of 90s references was great in the wardrobe. Um, so I like. So, yeah, overall, I said Pedro Pascal is my only, only iffy one, like, because he's so well known and he's in everything right now that I would have gone with somebody else. Um, I would have, I would have been a hundred percent okay with Sterling came around, or even like a Joseph Ford and Love It thrown in there. Um, but yeah, let me know what are your thoughts on this new cast for the Fantastic, for the first family in the MCU. Hopefully, that hopefully in the MCU, as in Marvel, Disney will do the Fantastic Four right. I don't know how they can do it wrong. When they literally have a blueprint called The Incredibles that came out 20 years ago. Um, now if you need any type of blueprint, <laughs> go watch The Incredibles. Um, but you let me know, are you a fan of this casting choices? <coughs> uh, let me know in the comments below, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment. Matt in the back.